I don't think the film business will disappear. When the film came, the, 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 everybody said, the theater is finished. It's not true. So whatever the evolution of the film business, we will have a strong industry related to that uh, expression. I was an amateur cinematographer, eight millimeter at that time, of course. So I went to the National Film Board <laughs> with my projector and some eight millimeter films. And I said, I'm very much interested in film. And I heard that you're looking for a position. And John Grierson came out of his office with his Scottish accent. And he says, well, show me those films, young man. <laughs> And uh, I put my, the film on the projector and I, he looked at maybe 10 minutes. And uh, quote unquote, he says, this young man seems to have some talent. Give him a job. For me, getting started into the film business revolved a lot around CBC television news because they would pay a whole $35 and give you a free roll of film if you brought a story in. There before me was the largest lion I have ever seen in my life. This lion was eyeing me. I could see him, his eyes darting, watching me move. Unbeknownst to me, the trainer had been told by the director, who by the way, wasn't in the cage. He said, make him roar, make him roar. And the trainer was sticking this lion in the ribs with the back of his whip. And he was really, well, the lion let out this colossal roar and the big jaws. I mean, I was about three feet from this thing. I, I just collapsed in fear. This thing yowled and roared at me. And I did an Olympic sprint out of that cage. I broke all record. Winston Churchill's son or grandson or something was coming to open the falls and do a big deal. There's no trees out there, it's just barren, it's desolate. There was about 15 of us reporters and camera people there, and suddenly a rain squall started. What do we do? We had a choice. So we said, okay, um, the cameras are set up on tripods, they have the rain covers on, the equipment cases are empty. Let's take off our clothes, put them in the camera boxes. As soon as the rain shower is over, we'll dry ourselves off, put our clothes back on again so we're presentable. So we all took our clothes off. And put them in the camera boxes. Well, immediately there's this whoosh, 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 whoosh. The helicopter bearing Mr. Churchill was about to land. Now he had a choice. Run naked for the cameras and get the shot, or put our clothes on and look sophisticated. We ran for the cameras. Well, this poor man, Churchill, he opened the door of the helicopter and he says, oh, I guess these guys have been in the bush a bit too long. You couldn't be a phony and be a cameraman. You might be able to buffalo your way through in terms of being other sort of things, a producer, or a director, or whatever, especially if you had a good cameraman. But, you know, at the end of the day, you could tell whether a cameraman was a good cameraman or not. When and why did I join the CSC? Oh, man, as soon as they'd let me. It gave us a feeling of professionalism that wasn't there before. So our skills and our work now was underlined by an association. I felt that the CSC for a West Coast member was a great unifying factor for the industry. A wonderful vehicle for joining cameramen from coast to coast and enable them to learn by each other's experiences. I just want to wish uh, continued success on its 50th anniversary to the CSC and I hope they go on with greater and more wonderful projects. The film business is a business, yes, but it's got to be more than a business. It's got to be more than that. For the writers, for the directors, for the cameraman, for everybody. In other words, substance. And uh, without substance, it's nothing. <laughs>